is, right there on the surface, right there, right there, big hammerhead. Okay, I got it. You got, got it hooked him. up? I'm hooked. I'm Let him eat in a long time. We got another one circling the boat. It's bigger than this one. It's right under it. It's right under it. Look at that, right there. I've, I've got another rod. I can go with this other rod. There's two of them. There's two more back there. Look at this. Unbelievable, man. Hey, I got this one. Look at that thing. Oh, holy mackerel. Woo! That is a shark. That's the biggest fish I've ever caught. Woo! This is a star. Oh, yes! <laughs> Look at that guy. Okay, I got him relax. Oh, my God! Suffolk Saltwater Experience with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. We've been, you know, seeing those hammerheads there, you know, every year more and more eating those tarpon. I mean, it's, you know, it's an unfortunate thing for us when we're tarpon fishing. Um, you know, I'd say last year in, in, in early season, March and April, almost every day we would have a, a shark, you know, get chased or eaten by the hammerhead. And it got to the point where where um, you know we were just locking the drag down, trying to catch them as quick as we could. Right. Um, you know, trying to avoid them with the boat. You know, running circles around them. I mean, it was um, you know trying to do everything we can to keep the tarpon from getting eaten. And this, you know, and I was saying, Tom, you know, we should go up there instead of just you know considering he's a nuisance and go try to catch one. Right. And, uh, and we luckily we had done all our rigging before. We had done done it at the dock there. We had our big wind on leader, double wire, big hook. We had our, our, you know, our big stand-up rods, the harness. We were loaded for bear. I mean, we were set up. I mean, so many times we're out there and we see a fish like that, you know, after our tarpon. What are we gonna do? We're gonna pitch a tarpon rod at him. You know, I mean, we'd be there all day. I mean, right. you know, we had, we probably had, you know, over 20 pounds of drag on that reel. Um, you know, set, set there, and, probably, and that wasn't enough. No, you know, it wasn't enough. Um, and, and you know, we had, you know, when we were rigging it up, you know, I was saying, you know, let's put full-length 15-foot leaders, and, you know, wind on, you know, that was a 100-pound um, wind on leader. We had, uh, you know, and then we doubled that wire, and you know, you know, it looked like overkill. It looked like overkill, but I'm here to tell you, <laughs> we could have used a little more. We've been losing way too many of those uh, tarpon. We're gonna go uh, to those hammerheads. We're gonna go see if we can give him a little grief. How's bait catching this morning? Hard. Bait are laying down the bottom. Yeah. He's swimming by me. All right. Thanks, man. That's good right. stuff. It sounds like uh, a few of the guys got good tarpon bites last, you know, last couple days. Corey got two bites last night. Yeah. The wind's cranking. It's nasty, but there's a uh, still big fish out there eating. If we're here to catch the, the hammerhead, man, we ought to spend as much time doing it as possible with chum. Bring tarpon fish while we're chumming. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If it messes up the tarpon, oh well, right? Let's talk, let's talk to Buddy here. I know he hooked that guy yesterday. I want to find out what he's doing. Hey, Buddy, I hear you hooked a big hammerhead yesterday. Oh, not the hammerhead, a hammerhead, about 300 pounds. Yeah? We the leader up, and uh, we got the double on his tail, and he turned and bit the double back. Chum with a cooter or something? All I did was use a uh, cut 12 pound cooter and uh, just cut him in half. Use the head. He ate the head. Just on top? No, I had it on the bottom. I didn't have any balloons. But hadn't been to a party in a while. <laughs> well, well, we got plenty of party balloons. All right, well, we're going to go try to mess with them a little bit. Big cooters on that east end right under the bridge. Right under the bridge, yeah. Put some That's what we need, man. Put some steel we on it. Need three or four of those. That's what we'll do. Let's go try to catch one of those. See what happens. He's aggressive. Be careful. <laughs> he is. I'm just telling you. Well, Tom likes wrestling him, but uh. You know those those light ones normally ain't aggressive, but he he's aggressive. There's two. There's two big black ones too. There's one black one bigger than that white one we've been seeing, and there's one smaller. Sounds like we got plenty of sharks to uh, target. We'll see. <laughs> I heard that story before though. 
it's all dock talk until you start hooking them. <laughs> okay, he's back behind the boat. He's getting the scent. He's getting the scent. Oh, there's two. There's two. There's two. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience presented by Yellowfin is brought to you by Hawks K Resort Marina and Villas. All the fun of the Florida Keys in one island resort. Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Quantum Rods and Reels, fishing at a quantum level. By Mercury Marine. Lowrance, makers of HDS, high definition systems. By Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Sperry Topsider, a passion for the sea. And by Loadmaster, Power Pole, Corrosion Block, Ocean LED, and Tough Line. The hardest thing about catching the, 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 the sharks was getting the bait. I mean, you know, I talked about it the night before. I said, That's you right. know, I don't know what they're going to eat. I mean, I've never tried to catch one. I know they eat tarpon, but I didn't want to go catch a tarpon and sacrifice no, a tarpon. Do that. But you, and you're saying, you know, well, barracudas, that's what we use from down here. I'm like, I don't know if they're going to eat that. That's got bit. There he's after me. He's after me. See him? Oh, yeah, he ate it that time. There he is. That's a big one. That was a good bite, huh? That was awesome, man. <laughs> right on surface. Came too. after that so hard. It's one of the coolest bites, man, watching this live mullet jump away from these things. I'm gonna move up to the front here, hold on. It's right here. We spent about an hour or two hours just trying to catch a barracuda, and when we finally did, and that was fun too, just to catch another. <laughs> but we finally caught a big barracuda. You know what? I knew. They, there's way too much evolution going on for them not to eat a barracuda. In fact, I think it could have been any fish out there. Now, a big hunk of meat is what that guy wants. Nice. We got our bait. Yeah. Now we need to back up before we run aground. <laughs> Cudas are usually gentlemen. Yeah. They'll sit in the net. I, I will definitely let you, you pick up the kudas. You're, you're definitely a chief kuda grabber. That is a really, really nice barracuda. Chum line out, maybe just drag it right down the, the edge of this bridge here. I'm sure these, it always seems like when we hook these tarpon, they're you know right out in this zone where, where we get bit. So I think these sharks are just patrolling this outer zone. If we just take a, drag some chum down this, this edge, maybe we'll get them, get them coming. Right. Tell you what, you gotta watch out even with a dead cougar. Yeah. Man, we got there and carved up that barracuda and we're planning on chumming there. And we show up and the guy's fin's already out of the water. He was already there maybe either Wait. attacking a tarpon or getting ready to or just kind of surveying the scene. But his fin was up. Here he is right there on the surface, right there, right there, big hammerhead. Drug that chum line right in front of him, and man, it took about honestly about 20 seconds. Yeah, you're right. Here he's right behind the boat. He's gonna eat me right now. He got. Me. He's gonna eat it. Watch the bridge. I got the fish on my bait. We got there and. You know, put that cuda out, and all of a sudden, you know, not only one, but two or three were there, and the first one that that we hooked was not a real big one, you know, and only four or five hundred pounds. Yeah. Miles. Okay, he's back behind the boat. He's getting the scent. He's getting the scent. I got a goose. He's getting the scent. Oh, there's two. There's two. There's two. Okay, he just picked me up. Something picked me up. Okay, I got it. You got, I got it hooked it. up? I'm hooked. Let, Let him eat it a long time. Got him. Hooked up. We gotta go under the bridge, man. You hooked up? Yep. The craziest thing about that is that is where I grew up. I grew up snorkeling that water, diving that bridge, spear fishing, everything like that. And in the same place, we had four hammerhead sharks over 500 pounds, up to over 1,000, circling our boat in a feeding frenzy. If I had known they were there, I would have never in my life gone swimming. And I, and I haven't been swimming since that happened. <laughs>
I see guys lobstering around those bridges. And, uh, I don't know that I've ever heard of a hammerhead attack, but I can tell you what, those hammerheads want to eat those tarpon, and apparently they like to eat barracudas too. Yeah. <laughs> we talk about it, we talk about it, and then we did it. We hooked the big hammerhead. And I'll tell you what, man, I'm so glad I got this gear on. All right, hold on. He came off, he's gonna bite it again. He's gonna bite it again, right on the surface. Oh, that's a monster one time, let him eat it long. There he is, right on the surface take, here, Rich. Take Check your time, this out. Man. Yeah, he's right on the surface. It we didn't take no long. Longer. It took longer to catch that bait. We are no longer under gun. I mean, we showed up, Tom. We didn't even put the anchor down. I saw him finning on top. We just ran over there, sight cast to a 300-pound hammerhead. There was two there, you know. I, I know the one looked about like 600. This one looks like about two, 300. It's pretty, pretty sad when we're saying that's the smaller one. <laughs> I'd say we have a, a hammerhead infestation. You know, what surprised me too was the fact that there were so many. I, you know, we'd, I'd always assume, you know, I mean, even though every day, you know, myself or one of the other guys fishing that bridge would have a tarpon get eaten, we would assume that it was the same fish or a different fish. We'd say, oh no, he probably won't eat tomorrow because, right. because he ate today. Right. You know, we'd see, well, we, we'd think there's a couple of them, right. but I never thought there was as many as we saw. Now, I'm just gonna kind of wear them out here a little bit. And then I'll be slide back message. towards the rod holder. Let me just wear him out here a little bit. Oh, yeah. We got another one circling the boat. It's bigger than this one. It's right under him. It's right under him. Look at that right there. I've, I've got another rod. I can go with this other rod. I don't know. That's a good idea, Tom. I'll never forget, you know, as I'm landing that, they're swimming under the boat. They're swimming around. They're swimming all over the place. and. There we are with this one. I, I can remember clear as day, you're on the bow of the boat wiring that shark. And I'm going, what do I do, man? They're, they're right here. They're right here. And you're like, catch them. And we just had a piece of, uh, you know, we caught a nice cuda. And there was a barracuda filet laying on the cooler that we were planning on cutting up for baits, you know? And there was just no time, man. And there was another rod here. And I just unhooked the rod. You said, I'll cut this guy off. I hooked that other cuda filet up and just threw it in the water, and this guy comes over. There's two of them. There's two more back there. There's two more. Look at them. Look at them. Both of them right behind the boat. Look at this. Unbelievable, man. Hey, I got this one. OK, set the hook on him. I'm going to cut this one off. He's got me. You got him? Kind of. Set that hook, and I'll cut this one off. All right, we're good. I'm cutting it. There he goes. Woo, yeah, baby. Big hammerhead. Woo! And we got another one on. This is crazy, man. Everybody talks about having the only one around. We got them schooled up around the boat. Hey, Don't believe it. You gotta watch out for me because I can't get. Go forward and I'll, I'll run the boat if I need to. He might have come off. No, he's coming. No, he's coming off. He came off. He's gonna bite it again. He's gonna bite it again right on the surface. Oh, that's a monster one time. Let him eat it long. Or set it when you got it. Two Whatever. of them. Two of them. Fighting over it. You got that big one. You got the big one. <laughs> Definitely got the big one going. Set that hook, put the steel in him good. There's three. Look at him fighting. No, he's gonna eat the bait off the top no, of the line. No, 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 no. He's gonna no. eat that bait. Real. Do Here, something I'm gonna him with the boat. Hold on. He's gonna cut my line. Good, 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 good. Come on, reach in there and grab that bait. I'm grab it, 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 Falling, falling right behind the boat like dogs, oh, you know, just, yeah. just falling us with their fins out of the water. I mean, right They're up there. They're all the same size, too. Yeah. Everywhere between 700,000. There had pounds. to be at least four different sharks there. Maybe we come to the back. Man, that's a big fish. Look at the other one coming. <laughs> oh, I felt the other one touch my line. Okay, I'm gonna go a little faster. By. The other one touched my line. There he goes. Look there. They're just driving. It's driving them crazy, man. Unbelievable. Faster yet. I would have never believed we could have done this. I was thinking, will they bite? I know they eat the tarpon, but will they bite and you know just bite a cuda? We got swarmed up like piranhas, man. God. The tide was coming in and it was pushing us back into the Gulf, you know, and we finally ended up back there a little ways and we felt like we were okay. The fight went on a lot longer than we had anticipated. It starts going out. The tide change. We fought him right through the tide change. No! 
Look at that. No. No. Man, that fish is pulling. Man, that fish is pulling. Just turned at me. He's coming right to us. Get ready to work the boat here. He's going back to the right. Man, he is pulling. Holy cow, is he pulling. He just decided he was ready to fight. Man. I preset this drag. I didn't think there was any way he could pull like this. <laughs> you know, it happens all the time, you know, when I'm fighting those tarpon at the bridge. The same thing when that tide's, you know, coming in real hard, the fish, you know, tend to push into the bay. And, you know, you usually are in your clear because you can land a tarpon in a reasonable amount of time. But that fish was so big, and I'm thinking, all right, Tom, we need to land this fish before it gets to the bridge. Close, but I think this is this is like a six, seven hundred pound fish, Tom. This is a big fish. He's a big mean fish. Look at that thing. Oh, holy mackerel! Woo! And I was pulling on that leader as hard as I could pull. I know you had, you know, 20 pounds of drag and couldn't get any more on him. And I was, you know, just up there, you know, ripping and tearing on that, on that, on that leader there, trying to, you know, stop him. And I couldn't move my hands. Right. Keep letting go. He'd get under the boat again. And it was just, it was so massive that we couldn't control him. That's like trying to hold on to a freaking truck, man. And when he got to that bridge, I'm thinking to myself, oh boy, this is going to be interesting. I mean, again, normally with a tarpon, we can steer him one way or the other because he's got enough power. But you just didn't, couldn't get enough drag onto that reel. You can just kind of steer him like right along us like that. That would no. be awesome. Rich, you need to do the boat. Go in reverse. Look at him in the water. Oh my God, look at him right there. It reminded me of like a, a rushing river going through that bridge. And here we go, and here's the shark, and here's the piling. And all of a sudden we turn him, and we just all of a sudden, we all just slid through yep. the same hole. And, and it was I like just, a relief. You know, in a 24 foot boat, going through an opening that's 26 and a half feet wide, you know, with a 14 foot shark. That's one of the highlights of my fishing career oh, right wow. there. And I wasn't even on the controls, you know. I'm just, just standing there with this big shark on the end of my line. Yeah, we got clear, man. I can't believe it, man. <laughs> I had nightmares. We're OK. Fighting a big fish from a small boat requires leverage. You can increase your leverage by using a fighting belt that's designed to be used alone or a complete fighting harness like this. The one that's designed to be used alone is designed for a rod with a smooth butt or a gimbaled butt, just like this one. This one you can actually take the end cap off and have a gimbaled butt. If you were to try to fight a fish without a belt, this might cause bruising and really chafe over a long fight. A small belt like this one, will help you to land a small to medium fish. If you want to go with a big fish, a really big fish, you're gonna to need to invest in a really good fighting harness like the one I have on right now. When I put this rod into my fighting harness and attach the straps right to the reel, I'm able to use the strongest muscles in my body. I'm able to use my quadriceps, my hamstrings, and my lower back to pull on the fish with the strongest muscles in my body rather than trying to fight him with just my arms. I can bend my knees, pull back with my back, and I can adjust the, the straps to get the rod in the proper fighting position for me. If you want to catch a really big fish, invest in a good quality fighting harness and hold on for the ride of your life. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience presented by Yellowfin is brought to you by Yellowfin, only at a Yellowfin. Fin Ore, legendary tackle since 1933. The Florida Keys in Key West, come as you are. Yeti Coolers, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. Motor Guide, never stop. By Sirius Marine Weather, satellite weather direct to your boat. And by Under Armour, King Sailfish Mounts, Stable, Scott Fly Rods, and Plano. I didn't know that we could actually do that, but you don't know that you can catch a fish like that until you try. And I'm not going out there, you know, without somebody that's very, very experienced in handling a boat. I mean, it's just crazy, man. There's just so much stuff that happened so fast. I mean, it's just amazing 
to be able to go out there, catch that fish, navigate it through the bridge, and then just to have a, have a chance once in a lifetime to hold and touch a fish like that is just amazing. Look at that. <laughs> now that, my son, is a fish. Much like any fish, when you, when you get it to the boat, when you roll it on its side, you see the girth. And that was what amazed me. As big as that fish was, until we got him to the boat and, and, and got him under control and actually saw him roll onto his side, mm -hmm. that's when, I mean, you just, that's when we said, look at the belly on that fish. How many people ever get to hold one of these like this? Not many. Oh my God. How many tarpon could you fit in that belly? <laughs> I don't know, but I'll bet you there's a few sitting in there right now. Jesus. That is a that shark. That's the biggest fish I've ever caught. Dude. You know, catching something like that and, and being fortunate enough to grab that dorsal and feel what it feels like and, you know, try to move that fish and realize how big he is. I mean, that's that's the reward for catching a fish like that. This is incredible, man. I'm holding on to the giant hammerhead. And there he goes. See ya, big boy. Woo! God, that was awesome. I, I mean, that was oh awesome, man. That was like the biggest fish in the ocean. Unbelievable. We did it.